all of these books, which ones to read and which ones to skip. I've got you. by Colleen Hoover. Fair warning, I'm trying to do this without spoilers, but there's going to be some spoilers because it's impossible to tell you what the last two books are about without you guessing what happens in the books that come before them. So I'm sorry. I'll be as vague as I can because I don't want to ruin everything for you, but even being vague as hell, I don't, you're still going to guess. You're still going to guess some of the things that happen in the last couple of books. Let's go. Five books, Hopeless, Losing Hope, Finding Cinderella, All Your Perfects, and Finding Perfect. Here we go. So we're going to divide this into two parts. Um, and we're going to start at the beginning with Hopeless, Losing Hope, and Finding Cinderella. Um, all three of these books were published in 2013. Hopeless is 417 pages, about 12 and a half hours on audiobook. Losing Hope is 333 pages and like 10 and a half hours on audiobook. And Finding Cinderella is just a little novella at 172 pages, about four hours on audiobook. All right, Hopeless and Losing Hope are basically the same book, right? Sometimes word for word, the same book, right? It's the same story being told from uh, the perspective of the main female character in Hopeless and from the perspective of the main male character in Losing Hope. Both books tell the exact same story of Skye and Holder, how they met, how the relationship developed, and then what happens when this giant secret comes out? So I'm going to talk about them together, about book one and book two together, since they basically tell the exact same story. So 17-year-old Sky has been homeschooled by her adopted mom, but she has convinced her mom to let her do her senior year at public school with her neighbor and best friend, Six. Weirdly, Six seems to have suddenly decided to go off on a foreign exchange year. And so Skye ends up going to public school all by herself, which I imagine was like super stressful. And I'm not sure why she wasn't crying about that more, but she wasn't, she was, she was going. So she goes to public school and she makes a new best friend named Brecken, who, by the way, turns out to be my favorite character in these books. And sadly, he never gets a starring role. Sky also ends up meeting a boy named Holder, who freaks her out from basically the minute they meet, because he thinks he knows her from somewhere. But he won't tell her where, he won't tell her why, and, and he's just, he's acting uh, weird and a, a little bit, he's kind of aggressive. So you've got like the normal high school relationship drama, they break up, they get back together, they break up, they get back together, they fight, they break up, they get, whatever. Um, and then like Sky starts to remember things about her life before she was adopted. And then we get to this like giant twist that I didn't see coming that explains, well, a lot of things. And I'm gonna stop talking right now because I don't wanna spoil the twist if I can help it. Because yeah, I, I didn't see it coming at all. So if you want the twist to be spoiled or you already know the twist, 
Tina at Tina Simeone and I buddy read and discussed this book on a YouTube live. And you can watch that video to hear us talk about all the shocking twists and the turns. Right now, I'm not going to say anything else about hopeless. And look, all I'm going to say about finding hope is it's the same book. Uh, this time you do get Holder telling the story, which you would think would make all the difference. But for me, it it was the same book. And quite frankly, it did not make me like Holder any more than I liked him in Hopeless, which was really not that much. Uh, he actually may be even less appealing to me in Finding Hope than he was in Hopeless. Less appealing. I will say that in Finding Hope, you do learn a little bit more about Holder's sister and you meet Holder's best friend, Daniel. But like otherwise, I felt like I wanted to just skim Finding Hope and only read like maybe 10% that was information that I didn't know from Hopeless. Um, maybe 10%? of the book actually advanced the story. Yeah, losing hope. Mm. So then we get to book three, Finding Cinderella, which is kind of like a spin-off of the first two books. The first two books focus really on Sky and Holder, right? And then Finding Cinderella is really Six's story. Um, and Six is Sky's friend who went on that foreign exchange year. So she's basically missing from the first two books, right? She's, I mean, she's there, but she's not really there. So Finding Cinderella is her book. And it takes place when Six comes back from her foreign exchange year. And it picks up about where Hopeless and Finding Hope leave off. It's like a continue, is it finding hope or losing hope? What's the name of this book? Losing hope. Why is losing hope? So yeah, Finding Cinderella is just a continuation of the story, right? Holder, Sky, Six, and Daniel are all like main characters in the book, but the story is really Six's. I don't want to say too much, but so Six and Daniel decide to be boyfriend and girlfriend, right? And so Holder and Sky are together and the story sort of follows the four friendships and the two romantic relationships. Sky and Holder are still keeping the secret that came out in the twist in Hopeless and finding hope, losing hope. Oh my God. <laughs> Sky and Holder are still keeping the secret that came out in the twist um, in Hopeless and Losing Hope. And Six has a secret of her own. And once Daniel finds out Six's secret, well, it's, it's a whole thing. Uh, and I'm trying to be as spoiler free as I can. So let me just say that Finding Cinderella sort of wraps up everyone's story and you're like, okay, cool. So do I recommend any of these books? I didn't not like Hopeless. Uh, I know it's not a ringing endorsement. Um, I gave it three and a half stars. It wasn't great. It wasn't terrible. Um, I liked that uh, the women in the book, that the that Sky was not like, she didn't annoy me or drive me crazy. I liked that I definitely did not see the twist coming, did not. And I liked that um, the twist really did explain a lot of the things that kind of annoyed me about Sky in the first half of the book. I did like that. Um, would I read it again? Probably not. But if you're a Colleen Hoover fan or you like um, teenage relationship books with a seriously good twist in the middle, then yeah, I would say read it. I will give you a warning though. 
The book does contain discussions of child sex abuse and incest. So if these are things you don't want to read about, this, this is not the book for you. So then, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead, read Hopeless. I don't, I didn't hate it. What about Finding Hope? Do I recommend it? No, no. Not, not unless you really enjoy reading the same book from a different character's point of view. Although honestly, there wasn't much to glean from Holder's point of view versus Sky's point of view. They were basically the same point of view. Um, so no, I, I don't recommend it. Um, the little information that you do get from Losing Hope that is different from Hopeless, like you do get more insight on Holder's sister, for example, but I don't think it's worth trudging through the rest of the book just to get that little bit of information. I mean, it's just, just my opinion, but no, no, I don't recommend Losing Hope. So what about Finding Cinderella? Should you read that one? I did like reading Six's story because um, she was in Hopeless and Losing Hope, but she wasn't in Hopeless and Losing Hope, right? Because she was off out of the country somewhere. And because she wasn't, th she was there, but she wasn't there, I kind of wondered what her deal was. And it was kind of nice to find out. But I was not at all liking Daniel's story here. And I would have actually preferred finding Cinderella to be sort of a standalone six story, maybe about like her time abroad and the things that happened. But um, that's not the book that Colleen wrote. So <laughs> should you read it? Should you read Finding Cinderella? I would say yes, read it only if you're curious about six. Okay, so that's the first three books, all published in 2013. Five years later, after everything is all tied up nice and neat, Colleen comes out with two more books in the series, right? She's got All Your Perfects, and then another little novella, Finding Perfect. All Your Perfects is 316 pages and just short of eight hours on audiobook. Finding Perfect is just 93 pages, right? It's under two hours on audiobook. It is quick. I read it in like an hour. So let's talk All Your Perfects. When you start reading All Your Perfects, you're like, wait, how is this part of the Hopeless series, right? Who are these people? <laughs> I don't know these people. Sky, Holder, Six, Daniel, none of these people are anywhere, right? This book is about Graham and Quinn. This book is a heart-wrenching novel about grown-up love, right? There are no teenagers. There are no high school angstiness. There's like none of the normal Colleen Hoover teenage lover situation happening in this book. This is grown-up adults dealing with um, like basically the end of a marriage if they can't get it turned around. So from the very beginning of this book, it felt different. This was not like the other Colleen Hoover books I've read. Um, if anything, it was closer to it ends with us and it starts with us with respect to the fact that it deals with a serious issue. It doesn't deal with domestic violence like it ends with us. Uh, in All Your Perfects, the issue is infertility and the breakdown of a marriage where the two people still love each other but they're failing miserably at loving each other. Um, the overall feeling of this book is just super sober from sober. From the very beginning, when Graham and Quinn meet, and then throughout the book, as we go back and forth between then and now, right? So you see how the relationship began in the then parts, and you see how the relationship is falling apart in the now parts. And it's, it's heartbreaking, this book. It's heartbreaking. I have to say, I did not go into this book with high expectations. And so nobody is more surprised than me when I finished it. And I started writing about it in my reading journal and ended up giving it five stars. 
five stars. So do I think it's worth reading? Yes, 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 yes. But be aware, Graham and Quinn are struggling with fertility. And so if it's something, if that's going to be something that you're not ready to read about just now, then you might want to hold off on this book because it might be too much, right? But if you're ready to read about that, uh, I wonder if you won't feel seen and like you're not the only one feeling all of the feeling. And if you've got a friend who is maybe struggling with fertility issues, this book might help you understand what they're going through a little bit, a little bit. So I would definitely recommend it. Um, you get to see one couple's journey. And while everybody's story is going to end differently, uh, I think Graham and Quinn's story is a good one. So I, I totally recommend this book. Can't believe I'm saying it. But yeah, I think everybody, well, maybe not everybody. I think you should read All Your Perfects. So then we get to the last book in the series, Finding Perfect. And it is basically the end of the story, unless it's not. I don't know. Maybe in five years, we'll have like book six of the series. I don't know. Anyway, so Skyholder Six and Daniel are back. And this is where I can't tell you what the book is about without spoiling some of the books that come earlier. So if you don't want the books that came earlier to be spoiled, I'm sorry. There's no way to talk about this book without you guessing maybe what happens in the other books. All right, well, everybody's back. Skyholder, Six Daniel, everybody's back. And we get to see what happens when word gets out that Six had a baby when she was on her exchange year and that Daniel was the father. And that's all I'm going to say about that, because if I say any more, I will have told you about the whole book, because the book is literally only 93 pages long. And like, if I tell you any more than that, I will have read the whole book to you. So, all right, I ended up giving this book only one and a half stars, because like it could have been a good book if it had been an actual book and went into like all of the things that could have happened between Daniel and Sky if they had been real life people. But 93 pages, it didn't really explore anything interesting or important. It felt like it just gave like a nice happy ending to the series. And it could have been something interesting, but it ended up being something that was completely unnecessary. So my recommendation about Finding Cinderella is to go ahead and read it if you just want to finish the series, but do not pay for it. Get it on Kindle Unlimited, because if you pay 10 bucks or whatever for this book, you're going to be pissed. So obviously, if you're in an All by Colleen Hoover book club, these are books that you're going to read and discuss, right? Um, but if you're not in an All by Colleen Hoover book club, I would say these are probably not books that you're going to want to recommend to your book club. The only book that maybe I would read and discuss would be All Your Perfects, but it would be with a very special kind of book club of like only people who are working through fertility issues, right? Um, All Your Perfects might be a book that you would enjoy discussing with other people who are sort of going through and feeling what you're feeling and feeling what Graham and Quinn are feeling. And so maybe it's a book that you would want to read with that kind of a book club. Or maybe it's a book that you'd want to read with your partner and discuss, right? Because talking about Graham and Quinn might be easier than talking about yourself and your partner and talking about what they're going through and thinking and feeling might be easier than talking about what you're going through and thinking and feeling. And maybe there's some of the same things. 
So um, yeah, those are the only kinds of book clubs that I would recommend these books for. So let's say you're in one of those book clubs. Okay, what are you gonna talk about after you read these books? Well, I've got you covered. It's time for the fig three. Three things I talk about with my book club after reading these books. How many twists were there in Hopeless? And did you guess any of them? What did you learn from finding hope that you didn't know in Hopeless? And did it change your perspective on the story? What did you think of Holder in Hopeless and Finding Hope? Did you think he was a good guy? And why was he behaving the way that he was behaving? What did you think when Six told Daniel that she got pregnant? Were you surprised? What did you think of Daniel's response to the news? How do you feel about all the nicknames that Daniel's giving people? Is he a good guy or kind of a jerk? I want to talk about the scene in the car in chapter 20. What did Graham do with Quinn's husband? And where was Graham's wife? Do you think it's true that we are who our circumstances turn us into? Is it always true? Does it have to be true? I want to talk about what's in the box. What did you think when you found out what was in there? Did it change anything about their story for you? And if you were Quinn, would it have made a difference to you? I wanna talk about the fortune cookies. Do you believe in fate? If you were Graham, would you have told Quinn the truth about the numbers? Or would you also have been like a little bit afraid that Quinn would fall in love with you because of fate and not because she was gonna fall in love with you? Should Daniel have told Six that he was trying to find the baby? Or was he right to keep it to himself just in case like it was bad news? What would you have done if you were the adoptive father and you got a call from Daniel? And what would you have done if you were the adopted mother and your husband told you that the baby's birth mother wanted contact? What would you have done? If you were the adopted parents, would you invite Daniel and Six to your house to meet the baby or not? So what do you think? You think you're gonna book club this one? Hey, if you decide to do it, let me know in the comments and let me know how it went and what got everybody talking, right? I would love to know. thinking of book clubbing, The Hannah Artist, Lessons in Chemistry, Give Me a Call, or The Future of Us. I've got videos on all of those books coming out soon. And I'll definitely let you know if I think any of them are book club worthy. And if they are, I'll be sure to share some of the things I'd love to talk about with my book club or anyone else who's read the book. If that sounds like something you would love, Make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell so you'll be notified when those videos come out. Don't worry, I've got you covered. If you're not ready to go and you're a Colleen Hoover fan, why not check out these videos from my All by Colleen Hoover Challenge playlist? Thanks for watching. See you next time.